Good morning, everyone. This is Marilyn. Um, I wanted to, today to show you how I start out my uh, painted quilts. I, I just recently started doing painted quilts, and I think, to me, it's the best of both worlds. I get to paint, and then in the end, after I've got everything put together, I get to quilt. Um, the piecing on uh, quilting was my least favorite, and the actual quilting of it is my favorite. So, um, my art quilts are whole cloth, so n none of it is pieced. It's, uh, and they're normally much larger than this. This is maybe about a 12 inch by 12 inch. But I thought this would be fine just to show you um, <clears throat> how I begin. So I, I buy a lot of white Kona cotton. That's what this is. Um, and to begin with, I'm using uh, Jacquard textile paints. Um, the, I, these are the ones I bought when I first started doing this. And although these, these particular ones are a little bit thicker than what I want for my background, um, you thin, thin them with water and they're perfect. And I'm going to use pink, I'm going to use turquoise, and I'm going to use yellow. It's the only colors I'm going to use in this uh, on this background, although I'll obviously the blue and the uh, yellow will have some green in it and the, pe the purple and the blue. Uh, we might get a little bit of lavender in it. I have already mixed up my paints. <clears throat> These are about 50-50 paint and water, maybe a little bit more water than paint because I do want that watercolor look. I don't want an, an opaque looking background. Um, when, before I start, after I've got my paints all mixed up, I just come along and spray um, my fabric because I want it to be damp. Uh, having the damp fabric uh, makes the paint flow a lot nicer. So you, you don't end up with just globs of paint. Uh, and you'll see this as I put the paint on. And I'm just going to start out with this much. I'll probably spray some more after I get some of my paint on. I'm just using an old brush. Don't need to use anything fancy for this. You can use a foam brush works or a, you know one of those wooden chip brushes. Anything. Anything works. And I'm just kind of uh, making sure that I've got paint um, in each particular color um, all over the surface. I'm going to try some blue here. And as you'll see, these colors will start to blend on the fabric. And that's, like I said, that was the purpose of having um, the fabric damp. And I can spray it a little bit more if I want even more uh, movement in the paint. And now we'll add our yellow. And you'll see immediately when I add this yellow that we start getting um, some greens in here. Almost done. Now you do not have to cover every bit of the fabric. I do just because that's my preference. But you can always leave white in there. Um, if if that's what you want in your background. I want mine to be um, all color. So I'm going to go back in here and kind of help these move along in these areas uh, where it's still fairly white. And I think, I think we got it where we want it. It'll be, um, when doing this, it'll be pretty wet. It, it's going to be pretty wet fabric. Um, and normally I would just let it air dry. Um, 
but in this instance I'm going to dry it uh, with my heating tool and then I'll come back and show you what we've got. Um, before I show you how the fabric um, came out, when you take your fabric off, I'm using um, just a piece of plastic here to, to protect my table somewhat. But when you pull off your fabric uh, to dry, you'll see that you've got you've got some pretty nice color left here on this plastic. I just take another piece of cotton and soak that up. There's no reason not to use all that beautiful paint. And this can be a head start um, to your next quilting project. Or it can be just a, a really pretty rag. But see, this is, I used one yesterday, so um, this has got both of them on it. And you just keep using this on each of your projects, and you'll have a gorgeous background. Um, and this will kind of give you an idea if you did not, if you if you did leave some white space. This is a little much, um, but it kind of gives you an idea of how you can put the paint on um, and still leave some white space if that's what you want to do with your background. So, okay, we're back. And um, here's my fabric. It's not quite totally dry, but this will give you an idea of um, what it can look like. Now, when it's still damp, if I wanted to go in here and add a little bit more color or deepen something, um, I could still do that. Once I'm happy with it, um, these paints are permanent once they're heat set. So when I'm happy with this, um, I'll take it to the iron and I'll press it, and then it becomes permanent. Also, <clears throat> wanted to show you that, and it's kind of hard to tell on this one, actually. I believe this is the front. A lot of times, um, the, you'll have a front and a back, and you can use either one of those. The front is usually brighter and livelier, depending upon the paints that you use and the back side is a little bit more a um, little bit more muted so um, uh, it's your choice you know which one you oh I have cat hair doesn't it always go my cats love to get up here and help me anyway um, that's that's it it's all ready for your background what I would typically do um, then is I would draw on whatever my subject is going to be. Then I would come back with um, the same paints, the same textile paints, um, but not not so watered down, uh, and, and put in whatever my subject matter is. My subject matter is usually birds. Um, um, I, I kind of like to do whimsical painting, and so that's why I like these kind of bright, fun colors. Um, so my next video, I'll show you where I go from here to paint the background. Um, before I forget it, you can totally do a um, a quilt and never have to buy one piece of commercial fabric other than your white cotton. I uh, paint my own binding for the quilt and I paint my own backings most of the time. That way I can uh, I, I know that whatever I'm going to have is going to totally coordinate. Um, so uh, I guess I would be buying more white cotton right now than anything else. But it's totally up to you how you do that. So thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope you'll check back for the next video. Thank you.